July 19, 1977, the world teacher, the Christ Maitreya, head of the spiritual hierarchy, emerged from his ancient retreat and is now in the modern world. With his disciples, the Masters of the Wisdom, he will inaugurate the new age of synthesis and brotherhood. Good morning and welcome to our World Teacher Program on Wellington's Access Radio 106.1 FM presented by Teresa and David on behalf of SHARE International New Zealand. Today we have two articles from the 2018 January-February double issue of SHARE International magazine, a few letters to the editor and Everyday Ubuntu, a recommended read by Phyllis Power. We'll start with the Master's article as given through Benjamin Krem. It's titled, Victory is Assured, and begins. It is becoming increasingly clear that the conflict between good and evil is being won by the forces of light. Gradually, the good is gaining the upper hand in this age-old struggle for the minds and hearts of men. To some, this may seem an astonishing statement to make in the light of the tensions and cleavages which exist in the world. Yet such is the case, and were you to see the world and events as we do, the elder brothers, you would see a world undergoing an extraordinary transformation. On all sides there is evidence that the old order is crumbling. Ancient hatreds divide the peoples and lawlessness abounds. But everywhere there are signs that a new spirit is awakening in man, a new sense of responsibility and a renewed reverence for life in all its forms. Many are the manifestations of this new beauty. Many and marvellous are the visions of the future opening up before mankind. Man stands as yet at the threshold only of a new beginning yet already the signs of progress are there for those who have eyes to see. We are witnessing now a polarization which is forcing humanity to choose. So fearsome are the dangers in the present modes of living that the spirit in man revolts and searches for the new. In this way man is brought to the recognition of the will of God. Behind all stands the plan, embodying that will and knowingly or not men are now ready to implement that plan. Groups of men are forming themselves on every hand to manifest the new. Inspired by love and the spirit of necessity, they envisage a simpler and saner world. They see that from the imbalances and tensions of the present must grow justice and harmony. They know that they are divine and can perform miracles of change. They sense the needs of the time and dedicate themselves to service. They represent the good in every land. Many are the ways to God, but the quickest and the surest is the path of service. No other path so fully embodies the nature of God. Take your place on this path and carry out the dictates of your soul. Follow the promptings of your heart and awaken to the needs of the world. Know that as you enter on the path of service, you accept your place within the plan and find yourself well set upon the path to God. Ready then will be the response from us, your elder brothers. Quickly shall we seize the opportunity to help you on your way through stimulus and proffered fields of service. Thus can you join us and aid us in our work. Make this your aim and join the ranks of the servers of the world. Take your place at our side and work with the forces of light. Victory is assured, but must be fought for and won. Be not afraid in the midst of the chaos and tension. Fear has no place in the present situation. Rather, see it as a challenge to your faith. Our second article is an editorial by Share International. It's titled Towards Simplicity and Social Justice and begins. We live in a time of extreme polarization. Very few, if any, escape its effects. 
Some experience the tenor of our times as a sign of inevitable great good and transformation to come, while to others the future seems uncertain. Share International magazine aims to be a source of hope, steady encouragement and inspiration. Our brief is also to flag up the importance of cohesion and unity, not simply as an ideal but as an underlying reality which needs to be revealed as an aspect of human nature requiring expression in all areas of life. The achievement of unity takes both individual and collective effort and alertness in this time of fascism versus light. Many of society's most important standards and bulwarks against fascism, the United Nations and institutions such as the judiciary, tenets like the rule of law and basic human rights and even truth itself are under attack. Commercialization has been eating into the fabric of society and much that holds society together is being destroyed. Competition and greed are seen as the norm, however, with the combined efforts of the masters and people everywhere, rampant materialism has almost run its course as we move towards new norms of simplicity and social justice. Much educational work lies ahead of all who are forward-looking in their thinking, who know themselves and others to be divine and are equipped with information and wisdom through Benjamin Krem's work with his master. Krem's unique contribution was to make real for today's world the ageless wisdom teachings, producing a blend of ancient and new. Our aim must be to present this information so that it is immediately accessible and relevant to those who hear it. It is the means by which we help to create, again individually and communally, a saner, better world for all, and at the same time take an active hand in our own inner development. The teachings must be experienced to be real and applicable, inwardly and outwardly bringing the subjective and the objective together to create an enlightened world. This venture is part of a hierarchical plan and has its own momentum. Maitreya and the Masters still give clear evidence of their presence, ongoing involvement, help and comfort, as does Benjamin Krem. The Signs and Miracles section in the magazine bears witness to this claim. This publication aims also to provide support to those taking an active hand in their discipleship. It can be seen as a guide given to inform ill developments and realizations. The Masters are aware of the sweep and flow of human, planetary and cosmic influences, the possible shape of the future. From their reading of world circumstances and potential, they respond and change course as the situation requires and allows. As Benjamin Krem often said, the masters are opportunists, and although the end is known from the beginning, they adjust their plans according to the opportunities and challenges of the moment. Of course, change can be frightening or unsettling, but it is important as we continue our work that crystallization and dogmatism be avoided. More and more people are aware that establishing social justice is essential if we are to ensure a saner future for all 7.6 billion of us. Similarly, we know that the well-being of our planet can only be guaranteed by our taking action and making our voices heard. This is a relatively new phenomenon, supported and galvanized by the masters themselves. As Krem's master has said, Humanity is coming of age. Taking responsibility, men and women everywhere are becoming co-workers with the spiritual hierarchy, consciously or not. Many activists, political thinkers and writers are coming to the same conclusions, that our current systems are bankrupt and a new way must be created by society as a whole. It is often the young and the young at heart who lead the way. Continuity of service and evolution are ensured through an inner organization which sees to it that generation after generation incarnates equipped and ready to deal with the challenges of the time. 
In this way too, mature insight and wisdom act as a brake on possible revolutionary zeal, allowing steady progress to be made. Evolution rather than revolution, as the Masters advise. The experiences described in the Letters section of Share International magazine are a miracle in themselves, endlessly varied in scope and content, healing, comforting, teaching, pointing to the future, describing training and continuing contacts and work with and for the Masters. Maintaining the Letters section is effortless because letters describing extraordinary experiences keep arriving in our inboxes. From readers' feedback, we know how important this testimony is of ongoing contact with the Masters. In brief then, the future is bright but still needs to be won. Help is always at hand, as is guidance and inspiration. My triad called on us to keep our eyes on the prize, our humanity. Finally, during Benjamin Krem's Paris lecture on the 26th of March 2010, he was given via mental telepathy a new message from Maitreya, the world teacher. Give me the opportunity to help you. That is why I have come. If you accept me, I will lead you into your destiny, that which has been destined from the beginning of this world. All depends on you. You have to take the steps which make this possible. We have to see ourselves as one, brothers and sisters, and work together for the good of all. We are not separate, despite appearances. We are one group of which I am a part, and for whom I work every moment of my life. I would have you know that at this moment my blessing is upon you. Accept my blessing, and live simply and with love. These qualities are close to my heart. You're listening to the World Teacher Programme on Wellington's Access Radio 106.1 FM. The previous article mentioned the letters section of Share International magazine. We have a few examples of these letters from previous editions of the magazine. In December 2021 issue, C.B. Engelson from Sweden writes, While awaiting my tray's official reappearance, it is wonderful to have Share International at hand. Several people at Hilfgarden are subscribers and we translate many of the articles into Swedish for internal discussions and information for non-English speaking people here. It is very interesting to read the letters from all parts of the world where people report unusual encounters with Maitreya and Jesus in disguise. It often happens here as well that Swedish weekly magazines and daily newspapers report remarkable stories from their readers where one, as a reader of Share International, might suspect that Maitreya or Master Jesus may have been involved. Here are two examples, one from 2007, the second from 2008. We were three women on our way to a meeting in Stockholm. Luckily, we found a parking place and, pressed for time, we locked the doors to our car. But we had left the key in the steering lock. There we were with our lunch, our handbags, everything locked in the car. We looked desperately around to see if there was someone to help us, but not a single person was in sight. Oh my God, I said loudly, can't you send us a key angel? Do you need help? A friendly male voice asked from behind us. None of us had a clue how he got there, but the angel happened to be a locksmith and opened the door in less than two seconds. And he didn't want any payment from us. However, I couldn't help but ask him where he came from. He pointed silently to the sky. We looked, of course, but could only see blue sky. After that, he vanished. I cannot find any explanation for what happened but the angel he was. I believe in angels. 
Dear Editor, I was sitting in the early morning train between Helsingborg and Lund. As usual, I was tired and tried to study a little before the day's lectures at the university. I had just sunk into thought about cell biology, the subject of the day, when someone suddenly entered the carriage like a cannonball, hallooing, good morning, wakey wakey, tickets please. It was the ticket collector, a big, happy, extremely kind black man with a wide white smile. What a refreshing and cheerful soul he was. Most of us in the carriage became merry and started chatting with each other. This remarkable man was indeed a spreader, giver of energy. I lived the whole day on this wonderful train host's fantastic entry. There was of course no more studying for me on the train, but nonetheless I was much more alert when I got off it. I would very much like to learn if it was Maitreya or Master Jesus who appeared as the locksmith or the train host. Benjamin Krenn's master confirmed that it was Maitreya in both cases. In the September 21 magazine, CR from the USA wrote, Dear Editor, coming home from the market on a Saturday about 4.30pm on St Francis Day. I was in the fast lane when my car stopped. I had no clutch, could not get the car out of neutral. There I was right in the centre of the intersection, car speeding past me. I turned on my hazard lights and sat there, couldn't get out of the car for help because I would have been hit by one of the other speeding cars. A few minutes went by when all of a sudden a beautiful young woman was tapping on the passenger side window. She told me not to worry. She would push my car down the whole block into a fast food parking lot where there was a phone. Somehow, with me steering, cars stopped and she alone pushed that heavy car one whole block and up a slight incline into a parking lot. I got out of the car and thanked her profusely, turned away, then wondered where she came from. She was gone. Then, as I rummaged in my pockets for telephone change, she came up behind me and asked me if I needed money. I told her I had some and thanked her again. As I got out my coins, I again looked for her. She was nowhere. I was amazed. I looked for her, but she was gone. She had a smile filled with gentleness and love. Her physical appearance was gone, but there really was an air that seemed to shower upon me that was saturated with her loveliness. She seemed to envelop me for several minutes. Benjamin Krem's master confirmed that the woman who pushed the car was Maitreya. This last letter from RN Toulouse, France was published in the April 2021 issue, but was written in 2006. Dear Editor, I've recently subscribed to your magazine, which interests me a lot as it talks about what is happening in the world and what is going to happen, which I find interesting. After some hesitation, I have decided to tell you about something which I think about daily. I live in Toulouse, in an area which is labelled as difficult, called Le Quartier du Mirail. I was shopping and was about to pay at the till, when I suddenly decided to buy myself a cake. I went back. I was retracing my footsteps looking at the cakes when I saw in front of me a young dark-haired brunette with her back turned to me in the aisle with a pram. I moved to one side to overtake her and as I reached her I saw a young boy of about two settled in the pram. Both started laughing when they spotted me as they continued talking to each other. Very surprised, I stopped in front of the pram and watched the child that had such a crystal-like laugh. He lifted both his arms towards me. He had such big, deep black eyes that I was astounded. They were filled with so much love of such intensity, and within an instant, I felt that those arms were calling me towards them. That child did not want me to hold him. In fact, it was the opposite. Within me, I was deeply touched by the intensity of his gaze, by his laughter and by his outstretched arms. Without a word, I continued on my way. On the return journey, I was sorry I had left like that. I should have kissed those outstretched arms, talked to the mother and child, 
I shall never forget the intensity of that gaze. Could it possibly have been Maitreya or Jesus? Benjamin Krem's master confirmed that the child was the master Jesus, the mother was Maitreya. And now for our final article from December 2019. It's a book review by Phyllis Power, a correspondent for Share International. She has a PhD, was a university teacher and was married to Benjamin Krem. The book is called Everyday Ubuntu, Living Together the African Way by Mungi Nomani. In the foreword to this book, Archbishop Desmond Tutu writes of his sense of pride and some relief that his granddaughter, the author Mungi Nomani, is passing on lessons he taught to his children, her parents, and that they passed on to her, the concept and practice of Ubuntu. Ubuntu is an African word and concept that should resonate everywhere. Although it does not come into everyday language, the rest of the world, this book is a good introduction. What does it mean? The qualities of Desmond Tutu perhaps encapsulate Ubuntu. When we think of him, we have an image of a man overflowing with a boundless love of humanity and a sense of humour without a trace of malice that derives from that innate love. Our image of Tutu is all the more powerful when we remember the horrors of the decades of apartheid that he lived through in South Africa and that he has come through still smiling and still loving. He says, I knew from an early age that being a person with Ubuntu was one of the highest accolades one could receive. So Ubuntu encapsulates all our aspirations about how to live well together. We feel it when we connect with others and share a sense of humanity. I am only because you are, Nomani says. Ubuntu is the founding principle of my grandfather's life. The book is divided into 14 lessons on how to live in the world with Ubuntu. Each precept is accompanied by practical everyday suggestions about how to practice them, small steps we can take towards being a person with Ubuntu. The lessons include see yourself in other people. Absolutely everyone on this earth is of equal value. Nomane emphasizes that the anti-apartheid movement was not an anti-white movement, but a struggle for all South Africans to be seen and treated as equal. She suggests that we try to view others not just via a prism of equality, but also of gratitude, acknowledging all those who have helped us in any way, psychological as well as practical. Put yourself in the shoes of others. Don't make swift judgment. Take time to listen and always consider others' points of view and motivation. Strength lies in unity in our political and social acts. We can always achieve more in unity with others than individually, knowing that others have the same aspiration for a better life and that we are not isolated but part of the whole human family. Nomani quotes Joe Cox, the UK Member of Parliament, who was murdered in the street in 2016. We are far more united and have more in common than that which divides us. To build on that sense of unity, Nomani suggests we look for any ways to join with others for a cause or a shared humanitarian work. Allied to this is the fundamental aspect of Ubuntu, respect for others and also for oneself, the need for a sense of personal dignity. To believe in the good of everyone was a lesson taught her by her grandfather and by Nelson Mandela in their struggles against apartheid. Mandela, who suffered 27 years in prison, said, People are human beings, produced by the society in which they live. You encourage people by seeing the good in them. This could be good advice for teachers and others concerned with the young. Encourage and respect rather than disparage and condemn. Choose to see with a wider perspective. Here, Nomani cites extraordinary truth and reconciliation hearings in South Africa. Held to allow everyone who wished to tell their stories of their experience under apartheid. The world watched in awe as South Africa put Ubuntu into action. 
purging its wounds live on radio and television, then granting amnesty to those who had taken part in political crimes. Seen as the only way of building unity in that bitterly divided society, the hearings also demonstrated the power of forgiveness, but at the same time the need to acknowledge reality however painful. An interesting thought is to choose hope over optimism. As generalised emotion, optimism can easily be lost, whereas hope involves trust and the faith never to give up in spite of the odds. Namani quotes Mandela again, we must accept finite disappointment but not lose infinite hope. And like love, hope is a choice. At the same time, Nomane urges us to find humour in our humanity. Laughter is humanising, particularly at oneself and in challenging situations. Again, her model is her grandfather who would make jokes to ease the most tense situations. Connectedness, love, hope faith in oneself and others. With Ubuntu in our world, every day is a new day and a new start. This is a gently inspiring book. Its look matches its content with a beautifully designed red and gold hardcover and colourful pages. It would make a lovely seasonal gift whose everyday lessons could last a lifetime. And that's our programme for today. If you have any questions or would like to know more about the World Teacher Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom, please call us on 06 36461 or visit the website share-international.org To inquire about Share International magazine subscriptions, books by Benjamin Krem, or our monthly free of charge newsletter, the number is 0423411133. All right to P.O. Box 9576 Wellington. Thank you for listening to us on Wellington's Access Radio 106.1 FM. And please tune in to our next World Teacher programme on Saturday the 19th of February at the usual time of 10am. You can listen again to this programme and previous ones by visiting our website at share-international-nz.info and click on the radio tab. Thank you.